Hello. Do you enjoy this picture without a cat? Me neither. Kitty is under the table again. <sighs> oh well. No kitty. Music has gone. Hmm. Also concerning. Let's jump over here. OBS still says that PC audio is is getting through. Well, maybe it was just this this particular scene. Kitty cam only. Wait, let me see. Ah, yes. It was turned off for some reason. Hmm. Well, now it's fixed. Good to know. There we go. Over here it should be fine though. Yeah, PC audio. Okotoko. Table no shitani. Neteru. Ma. Now it's back, yes. <laughs> How are you doing, Lucid? How is it going? As always, glad to see you here. I got some news to uh, to announce, so you probably heard of it already if you follow me on Discord or Twitter, but I got my appointment for the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, and I actually, like, I got the email today that for people, what was it again, like, between 19 and, and 30, uh, people can make appointments now. And so I did, and there was an appointment for tomorrow free, like, several ones even. I thought, okay, well, I guess I'll take one of these. For today there were none, but also I didn't really want to go right now today, like, uh, give me at least a day, okay? <laughs> and yeah, tomorrow we're gonna go to the to the Vienna Center, which um, to a huge hall where they're probably gonna have all of this prepared. And I get a... <clears throat> Uh, a Johnson and Johnson uh, jab, which has its ups and downs. Uh, the upside is that you know that it is first of all it's just one dose that you need, so I don't have to go again. I just get this one and I'm done until like maybe a, a year or something like that, and that's great. It's convenient. The downside is, of course, that it has a bit uh, less efficacy uh, and compared to other vaccinations. Although you you do have to understand uh, what those numbers mean. Like there are different numbers for different kinds of like severities. Um, r reducing the the risk of getting hospitalized is base is is practically one hundred percent. So. And that's the main point of these vaccinations, to uh, prevent exactly that. And also, it reduces the risk of the, uh, developing severe symptoms, which are not that severe that uh, you have to go to the hospital, but still, still pretty bad. You would probably have some um, lasting damages from the infection. Uh, and that vaccine is also good at preventing that. Just for for mild and uh, and, and kind of medium symptoms, um, it is not as good. It's like seventy percent or less uh, efficacy to uh, for preventing that. Um, but I take it; it's totally fine for me. I mean, also I am pretty healthy and young, and so. That number would be probably even higher for me personally compared to a, a, a old person who has maybe some kind of health issues. So what I understand is that 
young people especially get like Johnson and Johnson and stuff like that and the older population and, and other people in certain um, areas of work get those vaccinations that have higher efficacies. But yeah. So that's the news, so yeah. Excited about it. We'll see how I'm gonna do during the during the weekend after that. We'll see. Uh, I didn't get infected, so at least that won't make the, the, the side effects worse. But yeah. Got no sleep. Uh, I feel lethargic. Oh no. I'm sorry to hear that. I got a bit, little bit... Got a little bit too hyped up last night. Dancing for the Bone Man. How uh, are the temperatures over there at this point, by the way? I hope it's hasn't gotten super hot again. I just opened the window um, to close the outside window, and it was like a, a difference of more like about 10 degrees or something like that. And it's just oh god, I'm glad the temperature is not the inside temperature. Oh god, let's close the windows. <laughs> it's it's pretty hot over here. Um, what is what does it say? Uh, 34 degrees right now, but it will cool down uh, the next couple of days over the weekend, and so that's neat. There is a thunderstorm incoming right now, and it's in the west of Austria, as it seems. So soon it will be here. Uh, it was a combination of the heat, noisy seagulls, and a sheer lack of fortune. Nice and chill today, though. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> noisy seagulls. Uh huh. Do you live close to uh, to the sea or some other kind of body of water, so that you that you, you have to deal with that? Hmm. We do also have seagulls because we. You know, we, uh, Vienna is built on the river, not on a river, around a river. That's what how you see. But they normally come during the winter time. So, yeah. I don't live that close to the sea, but there is a colony that usually hangs around the secondary school. Hmm. Well, there might be some place where they can they can get some food, and uh, so it is just their the gathering spot, I suppose. Hmm. I also remember from my childhood that uh, whenever we had like the old stale bread, we usually like made it into small pieces and then stood on the on the bridge and just threw it down uh, during the winter time. Um, so that the the, the the seagulls can catch it mid-air or they pick it from the water. <clears throat> and probably we weren't the only people who did that and the seagulls know about it. <laughs> so they come every year. Uh, now that school is on, they have no more rubbish to eat, so they've been exploring further. <laughs> oh no. Hmm. <laughs> they are. They are spreading. We come to your home now. To your garbage bins. Ah. Mm. So, um, you can see 
the sketches I made a couple of streams ago of Absolotl, the Axolotl. You can see him in the back. There we go. Um, although very tiny, but oh well. <clears throat> and recently I started playing Pokemon Mystery Dungeon DX for the Switch. And I've been having a lot of fun with it. And... You know, you do the little quiz, like the little personality quiz, and then based on that you get a, a Pokemon, a starter Pokemon, like that's supposed to be you. Um, although you can also make a different decision if you're not happy with it. And I got Charmander. And that's, yeah, alright, I like Charmander. Um, especially always like Charmander in the anime. Uh, with the super cute voice. Uh, and you also get a partner to choose and I chose Mudkip um, because Mudkip is cute and also you know we have Absolotl and Mudkip is I, I think supposed to be some kind of Axolotl Pokemon or like a mix of something. I don't exactly know. I mean, there's also Wooper, which is m even more of a an axolotl Pokemon. So the Mudkip is supposed to be something else, but I don't know. Anyways, it still counts. Yeah, it, like there are some clear visual uh, similarities between Mudkip and uh, Absolotl here. So. Um, I chose Mudkip, called it Absolotl, and is my partner, and it's it, it's it's the most adorable, wholesome thing. Like in the, how they wrote the partner is like very very supportive, always believes in you, and is so wholesome and pure-hearted, and it just couldn't have been a better choice. Not just not just because of the connection of Absolotl, but just Mudkip itself is so cute and it just fits this kind of role of your partner who always believes in you and always tries its best it fits it so well and ah perfect just perfect and i love that little guy and i would get so freaking heartbroken if something bad would happen to him I don't know what's gonna happen later in the game. Don't want to be spoilered, but if if something is gonna happen to him, I will lose it. Nobody is allowed to hurt that precious little boy. Ah. <sighs> Mudkip inspired one of the axolotl breeds in Minecraft. Ooh. Fingers crossed. <laughs> yeah, I've seen also the, the, the axolotls in Minecraft, but I don't think I ever saw it in one of my games when I played. Are the axolotls like normal animals, or is it some kind of mod that you add? <clears throat> Well, they, they, look, they look very cute. Can be a, a little elusive. Ah, okay. But they're part of the normal game. Mm-hmm. Usually found around underwater ponds. Underwater ponds. Hmm. I I don't recall ever finding something like that. I haven't have I haven't done a lot of underwater exploration. <laughs> underground ponds. <laughs> I mean I, I okay yeah. I, I was thinking like it's underwater and there is like a ca underwater cave and then uh, leads into let's say some kind of pond like a little air pocket under the ground, connected to the sea or something like that. But now thinking about it, this sounds like a a, a very complicated kind of um, 
geographical feature that might be a bit too complicated to to program in there so yeah just underground pond it's a bit simpler <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it lucid don't worry about it i was also a bit tired like like a, a bit more than an hour ago like before that i was energized and, and pretty good uh, and in pretty good mood still in good mood but then all of a sudden my energy just crashed and i had to take a nap otherwise i would be way too tired right now but it kind of worked so yeah but of course the 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 energy the energy push of me just starting the stream is enough to keep me awake and forget about my tiredness it when it happens yeah and it's like it seems so random somehow I just sometimes I get real tired during the evening and sometimes I don't <clears throat> and I don't really do anything that differently I think like a lot of times that uh, it might have to do with me having eaten right before I get tired but I'm not so sure like sometimes this is it's not the case But yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh yeah, and there is also one one other thing that I want to talk about before I start drawing. I'm wearing this shirt for for a specific reason because I'm hyped and I'm very excited because uh, me, Plip, and Ramika are going to play in about two weeks or so um stardew valley on stream and it's gonna be great we just spontaneously made those uh, those plans yesterday during the stream and just uh, let's go <laughs> and so yeah we are in the stardew valley shirt and it's also one of my absolute favorite shirts in, in general because it's just so colorful and cute. And it's just... Let me go back a little bit. Ouch. I really like it. I like it a lot. It's, it's a cute tree. Oh, shit. Go over here. Do we have music over here? Yes, okay. Cute. I like it. Sounds exciting? Yeah, it's definitely very exciting. But that was also the, the reason why I asked yesterday um, if you have ever played Stardew Valley. Um, but then you said like you already have plans with uh, playing with uh, with other friends. So I'm assuming that you don't want to have like two separate Stardew Valley playthroughs with friends on stream that, that might get a bit too much and too co confusing. <laughs> Um, so yeah. <clears throat> but I'm also very excited about that. I'm, I'm looking forward to your... Um, to your... Uh, your, 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 your Stardew Valley streams with, with your buddies. Still, <laughs> totally still play. <laughs> uh, well, we can, we can still talk if you want to, like... Of course, th that decision is not just completely, like, only up to me, but also Plip and Ramika, but, yeah. If you still want to join. Um, yeah. So, how about we make some sketches? So... What I want to do... Uh... Pokemon Rescue Ranger. Um, I want to make one sketch of Absolotl and one sketch of Mudkip. And they're gonna have this that that Rescue Ranger sash on with a badge. 
Um, let's see, yeah. Sash. Or scarf. We can get better results that way. Bit better. And does, does the badge have a particular particular design or can I just do whatever oh, okay that's how it looks like up close it's cute with cute little wings there are several ones and I don't know the difference So, <clears throat> let's just expand over here, let's just draw on the same thing. Don't need to make a, a separate thing for that. Let's start with Absolotl. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. to have a some kind of like determined strong stance for the little guy question is, do I draw him with all fours on the ground, or is he gonna stand up? Ooh, ooh, okay, I have a better idea now. He's gonna stand up. It's gonna be like this. So also this week I've been working on a new video, which is not <clears throat> that exciting. I already talked about it, but, but like taking care of your pen nib and then making sure that it doesn't get too scratchy and pointy and blah blah. I don't know. Especially for non-digital artists, it, it's useless. <laughs> um, but yeah. I still like how the video has turned out and it's gonna be released tomorrow and yeah. And I also made the recordings for the next video already. And just do the have to do the, the video editing and everything. <clears throat> 
um, which is going to be about uh, references, about collect, uh, like searching and collecting references. And that should be advice that is more useful for almost everybody. And I wanted to make sure that I pack as much adv advice into it as I can think of. So there's quite a lot in there. And that one will either come out next week or in two weeks. I'm not so sure yet. alarm again <clears throat> I do have to say though I'm a bit surprised that it was that quick for me to get the vaccination I thought like I'm gonna wait until until the end of the summer or even autumn and not just right now and it would that it would go so quickly too. It's kind of crazy that I'm gonna be fully vaccinated before my mother. She got her uh, she, she got her first jab already, but she she still has to wait until the second one uh, until until August. So I'm gonna be done before her and. Doesn't make much sense to me, but oh well. <clears throat> Don't really have much of an influence over that. And I think um, they just also want to really like push it right now and just get, get as many vaccinations out as possible. Uh, because you know the, all the the Delta variant news and and whatnot, and right now we have some pretty decent infection numbers, and we want to keep keep it as low as possible right now, and, and and not let the Delta variant catch up with the vaccination rate. Still too young to get yours over there, hmm. Yeah, 
isn't like the UK even more advanced at this point with the vaccination rate? Let me also check that. People fully vaccinated. UK 50%. And Austria is like almost 40%. That's weird. But I get mine earlier than you do. Strange. But okay. Maybe you live in an area which is not that high in terms of vaccinations. I don't know. Oh, look. How are the numbers when I, when I switch for just people vaccinated? Okay, UK is also still pretty far ahead. Was it, what is that like 67 percent and Austria has 55 hmm. well like I could have also waited but I just want it to be done and it seems like right now they have plenty of vaccine doses <coughs> So I don't really have to feel too guilty of like taking away a vaccine dose from somebody who who, act, who really needs it. I think like all the people who really need it at this point already got it or are or, or soon will get it. So. Pretty rural here, so it's not too bad. Hmm. <clears throat> hmm. Well, I don't know. That body is way too large. reflections but oh well let's get to the second stage <clears throat> I'm not at the risk so it makes sense that I'm at the back of the queue enemies yeah And of course, after I get my vaccination and like a few weeks have passed and uh, until the the full effect of the vaccine has like unfolded, uh, I'm still gonna be careful. Still gonna keep on wearing masks and all that all that jazz. Especially because it's the Johnson & Johnson uh, version, and so... Even though if... I get the virus, like, not, not really much worse than maybe some kind of mild or medium symptoms could happen. But still, if possible, I would also like to, pr uh, to you know, 
prevent those and just avoid those that would be nice that's because you, don't, you never don't really know if even if the the symptoms aren't that bad it still could have at least some longer lasting damages in your lungs because COVID is nasty like that as far as I know and yeah no thanks to that yeah, I'm keeping my mask. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And even after the pandemic is over and like everybody's vaccinated and stuff like uh, Yeah, the mask is still gonna stay. I mean not all the time, but when I, whenever I feel sick or whenever I go to Some kind of event or like some some place where there are tons of people in very close quarters uh yeah the most uh, even though mask is primarily for protecting others and not really so much for protecting yourself but still at least something like some kind of protection barrier on me and okay. yeah i mean the south koreans and the japanese have been doing so for for a long time at this point and for them it's normal and i would love to see that sort of sentiment over here or like just somewhere on, in the rest of the world that would be would be pretty reasonable because you know it's it's about thinking of others and and You know, just trying to not get others infected with, with the stuff that you carry. It makes a lot of sense. And now people should be more used to, to wear a mask, so... It doesn't look that weird when you, when you wear one. I, I really don't know what to do with these kind of... These light reflections it looks weird somehow with the with this lid down this is where they would go normally and then if i cut it off like that it looks very weird <sighs> Maybe it's a... Yeah, it can kind of work, I suppose. He's so mad. Hey there, Adil. Welcome. Following your Steven Universe drawing series right now, thank you so much, Yuri. Oh, thank you, I'm glad you like it. Uh, Steven Universe, that has been a while since I made those videos. But I'm glad that they're still useful to some people. you doing well I, I get it that you that you like drawing Steven Universe fan art are there some other things that you like drawing and what do you work with is this like me like digital media or do you use something else
I have to say the the Steven Universe and the, like in general the the cartoon and video game character tutorials have been helping me out at least a little bit for learning how to deconstruct like these kind of very simple characters, these cartoony characters and draw them again and also in general with like expressions and stuff like that <sighs> I say it's getting pretty hot. That's the problem with streaming during during the hot days in the summer. Hmm. Let's make it a set of different body types. I was struggling with that, and also other quirky features. I'll smith build my visual library. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Universe had, has a pretty wide um, range of body types, which is also pretty cool. And you know that also makes people feel more included and I feel like um, there's something for everybody in that in that series like uh, there are there are, there's some kind of character that you can identify with at least to some degree that's where very colorful and it's also part of the reason why I love it so much. There I still haven't watched like the the newest seasons of Steven Universe after the main story was over. I still haven't gotten around it, and I know it has been out for quite a while at this point. Wanna grab some food? Alright. Get some food. Screen, little battle scram. Practicing traditional and to do digital for detailed projects. Give to friends, oh neat. Yeah, it's a good idea to do both still. Um, both have their ups, ups and downs. Like for example, I do I still do traditional art when I go somewhere else. Um, 
because it's very easy to just bring some paper and some pencils with you and just draw. Just sit down and on a bench in a park or something like that and just draw a little. And it's nice. Whereas digitally, like, uh, I mean, I do have a tablet that's portable, but it doesn't really work anymore because I had to take out the battery. Um, I could get a new battery, but uh, there's not really too much of a point in it. Yeah. Very, very new to art. So, oh. well, it's cool that you picked up art recently. Then, what exactly motivated you to start practicing art? Also, something that is always interesting to know. People have very different motivations. So then you also gonna get a little a little scarf. So I'm gonna do this. Look at this guy, he's starting to look so heroic. Oh my gosh. He protect as heck. It's really hard to find resources for beginners, people keep recommending either draw a box or a proco and as a beginner it isn't gratifying at all. Yeah, yeah. I know of proco and he does some good tutorials. But one, uh, you know, one YouTuber, one dude who makes tutorials is not able to cover every single little thing. Like, I'm also not able to cover everything. For example, I don't really have anything about human anatomy. It's just something that, you know, I don't feel like really studying. I don't really have that much of an interest in it, and so I don't. Maybe at some point, but... But instead, there are plenty of other tutorial videos about human anatomy and how to draw it. And Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. Maybe I should explain why I draw this little guy, so... Um, this is this little plush friend that I have. Back here. Always watching over us. And this is Axolotl, the Axolotl. <gasps> Sorry. This little guy. I won him in a raffle uh, on a stream from a streamer called Plipsus. And I'm very happy. I'm very, very happy because he's so adorable. I especially love the tail. It looks so fine. Fitties, thanks. As you can see, I made some sketches of the little guy just for fun. 
And recently I've been playing some Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. And I chose Mudkip as my partner and called him Absolotl and I love that little guy so much. So adorable, so wholesome. And yeah, I've been feeling like doing some extra sketches for Absolotl and Mudkip. And then later I will move on to, to some cloud practice drawings. So then he's also gonna need a little badge. So it's a particular design. Look at that guy, so brave. Let's make the face a little bit bigger. <clears throat> I really enjoyed your cat anatomy video last summer. I had the opportunity to volunteer for a cat cafe in Mumbai. That's so nice. Oh, that sounds lovely. Ah, uh -huh. cat cafe. Ah, uh, we also have a cat cafe over here, and it's also very lovely. But I'm not. Sure. <laughs> I don't think that I would be able to work there. Um, it seems pretty popular. Um, how's cat culture where you live? Turkey and Japan have great cat culture. Um, it's um pretty normal they're not hated over here a lot of people have them as pets but it's not like they are everywhere um like as you said in, in japan turkey i'm not i don't know much about turkey but i guess you also have a lot of cats over there i know that greece has a lot of cats too i was in greece and <laughs> i was very happy with the amount of cats that, that were surrounding me <laughs> Um, and during my trip in Japan, I also met a lot of feline friends. <clears throat> but they, over here, there are not that many running around. Uh, also, because um, if there are some stray cats, then normally they are they are taken care of. They get in to some kind of shelter and then get adopted. Like uh, a lot of not. The two, uh, the two that I got, which of which there are on, there's only one at this point, um, they weren't stray cats, but they were also like you know given to the shelter because the the original owners weren't able to take care of them anymore. And yeah, I think that's like pretty common over here that instead of just straight up abandoning your pets, you just take them to the shelter or you. Uh, find somebody else who wants to take care of them. Uh, I was hoping to by the way, she's on the table, nope. She probably is outside. I think she hasn't sh shown herself the whole, the whole time. Also, I've been on the wrong screen again, as always. <sighs> um, we love our cats. Oh, that's great. In Mumbai. Hmm. My, mother, my mother is allergic to cats, so I can't get them home until I move out. Uh, 
Trees get all the love though. <laughs> um, well, I grew up with cats. My mother had cats before I was even born. So I already grew, I grew up with three different cats after uh, and then the second generation with two cats and those two that I got um, is basically the, the third generation and there will be many more <laughs> um, yeah I should watch Kitty it's a documentary about the lives of some five Turkish cats and their owners and you to premium I think. oh neat I don't have YouTube Premium and I can't really afford it right now. I have to save money to pay the bills. But then, anyway, yeah. But it sounds sounds cute. I used to watch a lot of cat videos on YouTube. Um, because there was a time when I did not have any cats. Uh, I know, it's... It's unbelievable, but yes, there was a time, and I really, really missed living with cats, and so I watched a lot of YouTube videos, um, especially a lot of Japanese cat uh, YouTube um, channels. There were some pretty cute ones. But now I don't really have that much of a need to watch them anymore. Although I, you know, I still scroll through cat-related subreddits and whatnot, and and see some funny and adorable videos. But I'm already very satisfied with the cat that I have. She brings me a lot of joy. I'm very grateful for that. So I think that this little guy is pretty much done. He looks very heroic. He's gonna protect all the good people and punish the bad people. Yeah. And so let's move on to the second sketch that I want to make with Mudkip. Never drew Mudkip before, so Let's see. The, the head is pretty round, much more spherical than Absolotl. Uh, the cat cafe I volunteer to is rescue only. They even have a calico cat uh, called Tiffany that looks exactly like yours. Tiffany's so adorable. What's your calico uh, called? Uh, first of all, that's very, very sweet. I don't know if the cats in the cat cafe over here in Vienna are all rescues. I don't remember. But yeah, that's, it's pretty sweet. I, I know that uh, a couple of cat cafes in Japan were like that. I, I visited a lot of those cat cafes and some of them were like rescue only. So it's, it's pretty neat. And yeah, my calico cat was called Hanami. She's in, she she passed away last year, uh, but yeah, she was also very very great. And my other cat is called Hoko. To explain the names, Hanami comes from the word Hanamizu, the Japanese word Hanamizu, which means snot. <laughs> so she had a, a chronic condition um, where she just sneezed a lot, a chronic uh, cold, no, not really cold, but something like that. Um, and you know, whenever she did that, a lot of snot was spread around. And so jokingly, I, I called her Hanami. And Hoko comes from the word Hokkori. So I made the, the head to 
Pokori, which means uh, warm and fluffy. And that's pretty self-explanatory, I think. Oh, hey, Plip. Hey, how are you doing? Ah, uh, perfect timing. <laughs> I draw Absolotl and you appear. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's okay, Adil. How is it going? You were summoned, yes. <laughs> They can already see it. This is the new drawing, the new sketch. Epsilotl being a little rescue ranger. He's so brave. He's gonna protect everybody. <laughs> um, our neighborhood in Mumbai has a lot of calicos. We named that calico Coco too. Ah, oh, so, so Coco also recently passed away. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Oh no! Oh, okay. So you misunderstood. Okay. So oh, my my calico's name was Hanami. I, I better write it into chat. Hanami. <laughs> Looks like he's waiting for high noon. <laughs> yeah, he had, now that you mentioned, he has a bit of a cowboy, a cowboy stance, cowboy look to it. That just needs the the hat. I don't know how to draw cowboy hats. Like <laughs> there, this is a cowboy hat. Looks like right, right. There, it's high noon. <laughs> yeah, anyways, no. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> like a little sombrero. I tried. I tried. I didn't really try, okay. I did. It's been out cattle rustling in Mexico. Yes. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad you you like the name Adil. <laughs> the original names were something different, like I think Coco was called Sunny. And Hanami was called Gucci, you know, like the brand Gucci. And it's just like, who calls their cat like that? Oh God! So of course I had to come up with different names because I'm not gonna. Sunny is okay, but mm, I wanted to give her m my own name, you know. So, Matkip, let's continue. Gucci, yeah. Uh, I don't know, some people. So then he basically has these two circles at the side. Pokemon music, how appropriate. <laughs> and, and he's not trying to be like super threatening or heroic, he's just happy. He's just happy of being a rescue ranger. And so he's just gonna have a big smile. The smile is kind of cut off by the side over here. Let's maybe move it a bit higher.
What is Absolutal getting me up to do then? Other than high nooning. Yeah. Well, Absolutal right now, and the, uh, the one that is over here is just hanging out, hanging around, and. and dreaming of being a cowboy right now, I, I, I would assume. <laughs> I have to go to dinner. It wasn't nice watching you. Yeah, thank you for dropping by, Adil. It was nice talking to you. And have a good dinner. And also, hey there, Ramika. How are you doing? The gang's all here. Awesome. Uh, just quickly hopping in uh, until my friend is home so we can watch Loki together. Oh, cool. That sounds like fun. <laughs> yeah, I I talked a little bit about it. <laughs> I can't I can't keep that secret. Not, not that we ever agreed to keep it a secret. I mean, we made those plans during last stream. It's not very secretive. But yeah, it's already well. We do have a space of a fourth, yes. Mm -hmm. Confidential. Yeah, nobody, nobody talk about it. Nobody mention it. It's the bad. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I guess I'm still gonna have fun watch watching you play it. Although now I'm banned. I, well, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just gonna play on my own then. <laughs> Press rule of farming club. You don't talk about farming club. Oh no. <laughs> Oops, well. Well, it, ha it has been nice, guys. Now, now I'm getting banned. It's. It's over. I've got it just got too far ahead of myself. And go punch Harvey. <laughs> One of the villagers. Yeah, I I think that some people just talked about some people really hate Harvey and I don't know much about this character and characters to know why. We're gonna find out, I suppose. <laughs> Can't believe Mink got banned from his own stream. Yeah, I know. Well, check out the new stream coming out pretty soon. Mink the Drawing Researcher 2. Totally not related to Mink the Re Drawing Researcher. Also, now the name got even longer. <laughs> Great. As if it wasn't even long enough already. So, very simple, just some ovals, some upright ovals, pretty much at the middle, right in the middle between the nose and the stalks. I don't know how to even call these things at the side. If it's supposed to be an axolotl, then those would be the exterior gills, but. I'm not so sure what it's supposed to be. 
other than an adorable friend. Best friend ever. <laughs> Mega 2 Electric Boogaloo. God. <laughs> Uh, still long though, <laughs> still long. Well, let's escalate quickly. Well, gonna come back with a totally not related username. <laughs> Ferret, the artistic scientist. <laughs> God, <laughs> definitely not meant to join research. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Now that's that's maybe like I completely fill out the whole the whole chat line now. Now I don't have any space right next to my to my name. I always fill in a new line. Perfect. Uh, what day started between? Uh, um, probably in two weeks, but things can change, of course. So. Nothing has been made official yet, but when when it will be, it will of course get announced by everybody involved. But yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to playing Stardew Valley, it's gonna be so fun and so chaotic, it's gonna be great. Ever since talking about these plants um, yesterday, I've been in such a good mood. Then additionally, the whole vaccine news came out, and I get my new vaccine. New, new vaccine. Like, I get a vaccine, the COVID vaccine. And so. Things are pretty good right now, and I'm very happy. Pretty tall head fin. Whatever biological anatomical function that might serve, but well. <laughs> What I'm seeing it's a little bit teardrop shaped. Let's see. Hmm. So I wanna think about what kind of pose I want to give him though. It's gonna stand and just be happy, or like, like pointing at his little badge that he just got. Maybe like sitting. Not so sure yet. Hmm. If 
think like a sitting one would be very cute. There's also a good reference over here. The head should be maybe a bit wider. Just a tiny bit. So, Blip, do you already have some kind of ideas how to call our farm? Maybe something came to your mind. If you're gonna ask me, then I don't really have an answer because also I'm, I'm terrible at coming up with names. You don't have to come up with something right now, of course. If you haven't had an idea yet, then that's okay. I just was curious in case if... The group chat <laughs> Stardew Woo. <laughs> well, <yeah. laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Stardew Woo. Oh my god. <laughs> Love it. Yeah, that is, is a good, is a strong contender. Yes. Cliff Farm is simple, but also pretty, can be pretty effective. gonna wear the, the scarf like straightforward like absolutely or is it like gonna be more side and it's gonna have the knot over here by the way around maybe So where were ch chickens? <laughs> I think this is a little bit too many letters, but it would be very, very appropriate, and very cute. <laughs> I'm glad you like the little mud I really have to say, like before that, I also found mud pretty cu cute. But playing um, playing Rescue Rangers right now with that little guy as my partner, 
really made me fall in love with this little guy. It's just, it's just so precious, and it's just the perfect choice as a partner. And it's just, it's just he already looks so pure-hearted and wholesome and cute. And then it just, the role of him in that game, it just fits him so perfectly. I wish to pet. Oh, yeah, me too. I love that little guy. He's so precious. Is gonna be right here. Let's see, right here, maybe. of adjusting the little the little badge with his little arms let's see how I'm gonna do this very messy right now this is the first sketch so it looks a bit chaotic but the second sketch will bring more clarity of course.
Let's move on to the second stage. Has anybody of you actually also played um, related farming games related to Stardew Valley, like Harvest Moon, Rune Factory, and whatever others might be called? For me, it actually hasn't started with Stardew Valley, but with Harvest Moon, I played it on the Game Boy Advance. I have some some precious memories with it because back then um, I got the game right before I uh, had the surgery in the hospital and had to stay in the hospital for a while and so that was the perfect game for just relaxing and just you know, just grinding, just farming and, and getting, gathering some money and just having a good time in this little village and just doing your thing. Because otherwise, you know, hospitals aren't really the most exciting, especially for kids. And so, something like a Game Boy is is very good to have. Very good to have. I haven't played Harvest Moon or Stardew, mm, so. Basically your first farming game, I guess, except for Minecraft, could kind of count it as a farming game. It has farming elements, I think. Well. <laughs> you have some experience with herding animals and farming a little. So there you go. Yeah. There we go, you are prepared for Stardew. I think can stop us. Been training for this. Played Animal Crossing for the social simulation side. <laughs> well Does it have it doesn't really have all that much farming, but animals and you kind of herd them together into your village, so <laughs> That counts I suppose <laughs>
And ever since I played the Game Boy Advance game in the hospital, I was a pretty big fan of Harvest Moon and played the, the other titles too on the on the Wii and the Game Boy, uh, not Game Boy, um, the GameCube. And they were kind of mixed. And which one was it again? I think the, the one for the GameCube was kind of weird. Yeah, I think that was the one. That was a very strange Harvest Moon game. I'm not very clear as to what you need to do. Oh well. I played Rune Factory, which is basically a mix of Harvest Moon and... Uh, well, it's just basically Harvest Moon with RPG elements. So you could say that uh, Stardew Valley is more inspired by Rune Factory than it is uh, by Harvest Moon. Also, we gotta make sure that Clip is gonna get spoil spoilered as little as possible. It's the, the first experience, and that, of course, should be unspoilered. So, we're not gonna talk too much about what kind of villages there are and what they do and what kind of events there are and whatnot you know, just, mm -hmm. I'm just, I'm just gonna find out like the sketch, I have to say. It is so cute. That makes me miss making tutorials about cartoon and video game characters. If only it would be more feasible. But oh well. Also, another reason why I love Stardew Valley so much is because the developer 
is one of the nicest, most wholesome developers, uh, video game developers ever. Basically made the whole game just by himself. It was a, a really long um, project of his and kind of like a dream of his to make it. And he did a, fa a fantastic job. And he still does most of the most of the stuff by himself. He has some uh, help at this point, of course. Especially had some help too for uh, for port porting the game to other systems, and you know, translation and stuff. Um, but yeah, still mostly his game. Follow him on Twitter, and it's just always the nicest things. Just keeps on working on the game, just keeps on giving. Although the game is or has already sold so much, and but he still gives us more content. It's, it still seems like he enjoys it. Enjoys. I'm working on the game and that's great. I think that we are pretty much done. Look at little guys. They're just so so happy to be a rescue ranger. Oh, look at him, he got little badge and he's so proud. It's 
fine. Flip. Don't have to. <clears throat> what you cooking, by the way? Also, I'm glad you like it. That was fun. Two blue sketches. Maybe I could do a little bit of this here. The scarf is slightly distinguished. Also, the colors of the, the scarves in my game. So, I have Charmander and Mudkip, and so Mudkip has a red one, and Charmander has a blue one. So, they, they wear the colors of each other, and it's it makes it even more adorable and wholesome. They're friend colored. Couscous with aubergine, chickpeas, and avocado. Ooh, sounds nice. Okay. I still like this one a lot in the bucket. <laughs> it's so, so cute. Alright, so let's get to the second part of the stream. Less cute, but still. Uh, so, where did I have it? There. We're not gonna make those clouds today. But some alto cumulus clouds. I use them from, from the past. I'm gonna have this background again. But yeah, um a little, little explanation of what I'm actually about to do. Friendship goals, yeah. What if we were... We wore matching bandanas while playing Stardew? Just kidding. Unless... Hmm... Hmm... That... Might be an awesome idea that you had just there. Or aren't you also able to have some kind of scarf in Stardew Valley? I'm not... I don't quite remember. But yeah, that would be neat. Oh yeah, so... Uh, where are my references? Uh, it's still so small because I haven't... Too large. Mm. All right, just fiddling around with my references. There we go. So. <clears throat> 
like this. So here are my references. Ah, got them I'm moving the the window. I just recently changed the the shortcuts and the, the mouse buttons to be more intuitive, but I was still used to the not so intuitive way and I need to get used to the other way. Well anyways. So here are all of the cloud pictures that I've collected so far. So hmm quite a lot. And they are sorted by cloud types and also perspective and daytime, sunset, nighttime. And I am right now, so I'm mostly done with cumulus clouds. Moving on to the next one, otherwise I just I will work on those forever. So I'm working on alto cumulus clouds, or could be counted as zero cumulus. The, the difference between them is just basically size and altitude, and it's just. But you can definitely see the distinguishing. Um, um, attribute of them just being in this kind of wavy pattern and yeah that's what I'm trying to get better at it like making this kind of pattern and the, the, the smaller clouds look more authentic so there is a bit of a difference to the usual cumulus clouds which are which can be much larger and so they are like more compact is like this one here for example you can see it's a very clear edge and it's just like this this very distinct shape whereas with a lot of these clouds here the smaller ones they're more they're much softer and yeah it, it works different for them to, to to paint them and still have to get used to it so that's, that's just what it's all about and last stream I did a speed paint uh, involving some alto cumulus clouds and I definitely noticed that I need more practice and I just should do some normal practice and not try to immediately go ahead and put them into a painting, into a speed paint. I was rushing it a little bit. So, in that case, it's a matter of what kind of tool we're using. That plays a huge role. This is a more of a, a softer tool. Let me try out a bunch. Oops, that, that's a very slow one. This one is pretty good. So I got a bunch of tools that are, were specifically specifically made for painting clouds. So I guess it's a bit of a cheating way, but well, if you have the tools available, why not use them? So let me just quickly see a cocoa brown. Still outside. Hasn't shown her all streaming. Coco. Maybe I can call her. Sometimes it works. How about we actually before I start painting clouds? That would be a good idea to just I'm gonna leave this open. We're gonna take a kitty break. How about that? I also have to remind myself to take a break every now and then. Kitty break, yay. So, Hoko. So, that might work. Let's see. Do some rustling. Also, pay attention to the to the door. Also, okay. 
She must have been sleeping. Hmm? Are you coming, Hoppo? Hoppo! Are you not here? Hoppo! You wanna get a stick? A little yummy stick? There yeah, you are. Finally. Where's the way? Can you just sit down? Sleeping long enough. Oh, Here we go and eat dinner. All right, have a, have a good dinner. Enjoy your meal. And somebody else is also getting a little meal, a little snack. Just some some, <laughs> some steaks with with turkey and lots of hair. Not hair as in hair, but rabbit. <laughs> Otherwise it would be weird. So oh, you're so excited. Are you so excited? Wow. Are you gonna stand a little? She's not really good at doing any tricks whatsoever, but... Sometimes she's trying at least a little bit. You want? You want? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Just, she's gotta work at least a little bit for the little snack. You're already lazy enough. Oh, uh, aha! Aha! Gunf, gunf, gunf. It's not really easy to, to rip off a little bit, so she mostly has to use her molars to bite it off. And if I stretch it up like that, then she can't really get it off and it's just... Ah. 
incisors, the teeth at the little little teethies at the front aren't enough. That's, that's definitely not the way to bite off something. Uh, patch, 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 patch. <laughs> uh, further and further. Ah, that's a limit. <laughs> One of the favorite snacks that I had, I don't have any of this right now, but there is this um, this kind of goop, and basically in the same kind of package like this here, like this little stripe, um, like some kind of uh, thick sauce or something like that, huh? and cats freaking love it, they are so crazy about it. You just squeeze it out a little bit and then let the the cats lick it off from the little strip. At least that's what you're supposed to do normally. <laughs> and so what I always love to do is just squeeze it out a little bit and then just smear it on the nose. Or <laughs> or on the cheeks. And it's just smeared and smear her face full and just you have to lick everything off. It's <laughs> total mess, but it's so funny. I know, I'm, I'm mean like that. I am sometimes a little mean. But no harm is done, of course. Uh, drop it. Last little bit. Mm -hmm. Stop. Ah, no, no, <laughs> that's not. It's not the right stick. <laughs> You're a bit too eager right now. No, no, we're wrong. You were wrong the first time. It still smells like like it a little. So it's confusing. You want more, huh? But you only get one stick. You only get one. I don't want to spoil you too much. Hmm. Are you happy now? Now it's cleaning time. Hmm? Once you fully realize that there is no more, it's gonna be cleaning time. Huh? Where are you going? I'm just here to. Okay, just sit over here then. I like the blanket. I really love the blanket. I don't, also don't really understand, like sometimes she's really crazy about this particular blanket and sometimes not so much. Like right now. Also, I think it depends on... 
like how the blanket is utilized or I, like when I have it over me, over my lap, then Hoko always wants to get on top of it. But if it's just spread out like that, then she doesn't seem to care all too much about it. I don't know. <sighs> I love you so much. Mm, scratches. Ooh. Scratchy scratch. wash my hands and take care of other business and then we'll be like that. Alright. So. Let's get back to it, shall we? Those kind of clouds, I definitely feel that you need to have s at least some kind of sketch, like some kind of direction which you follow, and it's just just going right at it is not the best idea. Um, I'm gonna just try to freehand it. Although, it's also a good idea to use some kind of perspective grid. 
Oh, the Hoku has left us again, she's outside drinking some water and who knows if she will come back or not. We'll see. So, for those alt cumulus clouds, perspective plays a huge role, because it's not just one singular cloud which just can be anywhere and it doesn't really matter. Um, here it's like a collection of clouds, and so we have to have some kind of sense of perspective as they get more and more distant. Hoko doing Hoko things, yeah. That's what she does. I'm gonna kind of clip this over here. And now let's see. Um, so I'm not gonna be able to structure, like, have to, have to practice paintings like this. I'm just gonna fill out everything. Um, So I could like have something like this, but that would be... Cat hair everywhere. Her shedding has definitely increased again it really seems to follow the the overall temperature now that it has gotten a bit warmer again it it definitely feels like she is losing more hair unless i'm imagining things but i don't think so so but of course those Clouds are not perfectly following always the same kind of lines, and so we get a, get a bit of a add a bit of wonkiness to these lines, these streamlines. I don't know how to call them. happy though let me actually try to just imitate one of those photos that I have let's do that maybe Maybe this works. Let's see. So for now, let's just try to focus on the general shape. Not too much on shading or any, uh, and and anything like that, but just the shapes. So 
here it would be very densely packed. And then as it approaches... So let me see real quick. to check some tool settings. So I'm just gonna follow those lines and that's, that's where the stripes are gonna be. The area between the lines is gonna be just gaps. I definitely also have to learn more about these clouds and how they work and why exactly they're structured in this kind of pattern. Um, back then when I was watching the, the lecture series, um, as far as I remember, he wasn't really talking about that uh, stuff too much in detail. would love to learn more. Not just love to, would love to, but also need to. So... The cloud shapes, the individual shapes uh, not too great. That is mostly a tool thing, however.
<clears throat> I do have to say it definitely feels very different to paint those kind of clouds compared to cumulus clouds. With cumulus clouds you follow a specific shape and do carefully the shading and everything and this here feels so much more freeform. You just do whatever. Just tap and brush anywhere you feel like. It's interesting. Just how different types of clouds can feel so different to paint. So what I also want to do is, so right now I'm using this kind of tool that has a bit more of a, of a, a jagged, sharper kind of edges. I'm tapping here and there and all over the place get the general shapes in and then I want to finish it off with a more a softer brush which also is supposed to kind of blend some of these colors together I'm gonna take this one here and just soften here and there some some of these parts So, so that not everything looks too rough and just too... How to say? Scratchy? I don't know. And then here and there, there are some parts that are a bit more blurry, a bit more smudged. This is what I can see in photos. I'm gonna choose a shading color and add some of this here and there. And I definitely feel like I should do the shading with the soft brush. That's a job for that kind of brush. Like, as for the shading, I can just do whatever. I mean, still, I still have to consider direction of light and whatnot. But as for the shape, it doesn't really matter all too much. Can be still very random about it. By the way, the, the things that I'm saying are not like, definitive, it's just things that I kind of like... I kind of talk to myself also in a way to... Analyze what I'm doing and kind of... Check, okay, is, is what I'm saying actually making sense? Is what I'm doing making sense? Is this good? Is this not so good? Not that I'm doing this <laughs> off stream and not really talking to myself all the time. But I'm trying to fill in a little bit of the silence here. These stripes here seem to be, in general, much darker. Because they kind of overlap and the, the parts that are illuminated by the light... Uh, by the light. Of course they're illuminated by the light. What else would they be illuminated by? 
uh, by the sun. Um, are not really visible, so you get some very dark stripes. Hoko is being outside, that's not very surprising. I also feel like, especially during stream time, she prefers the outside because when I'm streaming, I definitely heat up the, the room quite significantly. Compared to when I started the stream, the uh, temperature definitely has gone up. Although it's it's evening and the sun actually the sun actually mostly stopped shining. Sometimes not think about it, but the things that are in the room can actually contribute to its temperature quite a lot. I'm not talking about heating bodies, but just, you know, myself or the PC that's running. I think a lot of people, like at least a significant people, don't really know this. Not saying that anybody here doesn't know this, but if, for example, some kind of electronic device says that it it requires so and so much uh, power, so much so and so much watts, that automatically also means how much heat it is producing, like. That's the only kind of energy that will be left at the end. Uh, other than maybe light that might escape through your window and that's also a, a small part of energy that would leave the room that you're in. But the vast majority of, of energy, which at first will be consumed as elect electric energy, is, is gonna be converted into heat 
As simple as that. It's just basically just... Either it's uh, transformed into mechanical work, so like spinning a fan or something, but that also ends up as heat. Um, light, which then also largely gets absorbed by things around your room, and then also uh, converted into heat. And then just basically heat itself, like... You have to have a, a good cooler in your PC, for example, because... Uh, your CPU and your graphics card and whatnot, they produce a lot of heat. Uh, directly. Because of all the... Resistance in the electronics that... Uh, that you have. Well, and then you, you have all of that heat in your room, and a PC can consume quite a lot of energy. Like several hundreds of watts, that's pretty considerable. Now granted, like normally a, some kind of um, heating bodies, like, like, like radiators and whatnot, uh, normally emit heat in the in the range of like thousands of watts, uh, or at least it can. <clears throat> so during the winter time, it needs that much energy just to heat up a room. But then, during the winter time, it definitely helps to, to have the, the PC running. It's like a, a more convoluted, expensive heater. But during the summertime, it's, it's, uh, it's less wanted. And those couple of hundreds of watts like, can make a difference, a significant difference. Especially when the outside is hotter than the inside. Um, and so that all of that heat that you're producing in your room uh, basically has nowhere to go. It just stays in your room because the outside is even hotter and, you know, thermodynamics. Heat is traveling from hot to cold. Why am I saying all of this? Just to talk about something. And I like talking about physics stuff. As for the first practice painting, this is actually not too bad. A bit too structured, it's like a bit too... Like I could have done a bit more variation as for the shapes and everything, but that's okay. But some of the strategies that I've been thinking of actually work pretty all right. Like the shading in the bottom right. Oh, good. I'm glad about that. Yeah. So 
So what I can see from the reference pictures, like it can also mix it up by kind of merging some of these stripes together, every, like a few of them. And also I should vary the, the thickness a bit more. Sometimes it's got just get really narrow. But I'm doing a good job here, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is. But just sometimes it gets really narrow and then it just widens and it just should also consider that variation, that kind of factor. I, I should have I should have done this from the very freaking beginning. Just do some kind of practices before I actually do some speed paints and kind of freak out because I don't know what I'm doing. I, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, last stream I was a bit stressed out. Because if I don't know what I'm doing uh, and if it's not really turning out as I... Uh, as I've been wanting, then... I gotta... I get a bit stressed. Although there's no reason to, but... Yeah, still, tell it my brain. I definitely feel that I could do more improvement here, but it's fine. Um, for the first practice painting, it's alright. at least one more. Also, better take a break because, especially in this heat, I think I need more breaks in between and getting quite he sweaty, so I just go outside, splash some cool water into my face. Just get out of this room in particular for for a few minutes, so I will be right back. And also, I, I can pick up Hopple maybe.
Oh, I'm back. And look at that. We have somebody here. So what I have here is just a bowl of water. She has water outside and it gets changed every day. But she wants it to be changed all the time, which I'm not gonna do. It's just once a day. But she just really wants to have fresh water all the time. So I'm just having fresh water over here. And that's her trick it here in front of the camera. And I have a nice close up. I'm gonna lower it a little bit so you can see it better. Let me make it. There she goes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Blah, 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 blah. Good kitty. It's one of the things that I strangely enjoy. It's just watching cats drink. There's something, I don't know, very calming about that. Tasty, very tasty. He's making so much noise that the mic is even picking up. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I don't know if you enjoy this kind of sound, so you find them gross, but... I enjoy it. Uh, what you doing? What you doing? No. Why are you being silly, huh? You want it to be lowered? You're so thirsty. You really have been just waiting for fresh water. And as I said before, I, I changed the water last night. Hasn't even been 24 hours. But she seems to really have been waiting for this. I think I need one of these. Uh, these kind of fountains that just go all the time and provide fresh water all the freaking time for the cats. What do you do? Don't be too hasty, Hoko. I can always drink from, from a bad side water. <laughs> And I'm putting a cup specially for her. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is. <clears throat> well, it, it definitely makes sense for cats and for animals in general to just want to have fresh water and avoid stale water, like standing water. Um, evolutionary makes sense because the. the Standing water usually means that there's stuff inside that's not so good for you. But running water uh, usually means fresh. And there is not really that much opportunity for stuff to settle. Like bacteria and stuff. But it's hard to just provide running water all the time uh, without just wasting water. Uh, <clears throat> so, 
So instead, the cats just really want to have the fresh water, and and if it's just what you're doing, no, no, oof. I have to grip it harder. <laughs> you don't like it that I'm holding it, huh? You just still drink it. Are you are you gonna finish the whole bowl? Is that what you're <laughs> we're doing right now? My oh my, it, it's it's like. I'm not giving her water at all, just to have her drink live on stream. I promise you, there is water outside. And as I said, I changed it last night. Really. <sighs> ah. More? Wee, 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 wee. Even more. Yes, even more. Your belly is gonna be so full. You have a water belly. What you doing? No, no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> why, why are you doing this, Hoko? You don't like it that I'm holding the bowl, or what is it? Huh? You put it over here, no? I have to hold it. I cannot really put it at a stable place here on the sofa. You have to understand that. Well, maybe I could. Like if I put it like right here in this little. Rich, but I'm just gonna this, okay. Uh, that works too, I suppose. Uh, I'm concerned though. <laughs> okay, it seems to be fine. Just don't knock it off and uh, knock it over. I mean. <sighs> <laughs> First to go, yeah. <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Me. Don't. You don't need your paw to drink. You're licking the edges. Is it too low now, or what is it? If you would if you would sit at the river bank and drink directly from the river, that would be about the same height difference. So you should have no problem with that, Hoko. You're still going. You were so dried out. My gosh. My dear. I also have to ha uh, sometimes do this kind of distraction tactic with another glass or bowl of water. During the winter time, I was experimenting around with methods to increase the room heat humidity you probably you might remember me talking about it and <clears throat> i had this uh, i had a bunch of cans basically just simple al aluminium cans uh filled with water in my room and that actually made a uh, some difference in the room humidity um, but the problem was that Hoko was constantly drinking from that, and for some, like, I've been just talking about stale water and, and animals, and especially cats, not liking it if it's very old, but for some reason, she kept uh, drinking from those cans day after day after day. Um, and then not really switching out the water every single day because that water is just supposed to evaporate, nothing else. Hoko, what are you doing here? Huh? We're behind the camera now. You don't like it over here? You sniff sniff. She's sniffing the camera cable. I'm not worried that she might bite it. She, she doesn't do that. Hmm? 
Are you done? Is your belly all wop wop wop? All swoosh wop swop? has a face wow and now you come over here again right as I move it around okay the princess cat decide you want more <laughs> she still wants more jeez I think she's just getting greedy right now because this is like a special water. But yeah, as I was saying, the aluminum cans had just really old water in them. And at some point I don't want her to drink from it because it's just getting too old and and we should drink fresh water. And so I had to so what I was doing was just moving her usual water place from the bathroom to just right next to this... <laughs> to the... Air humidif humidification... Center... I don't know... Station... I don't know what to call it... So she had some fresh water right next to it, and then she was drinking from there. Although it was the same bowl and everything. It was still the same thing, just at a different place. But now she drank from it again, instead of the, 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 the aluminum cans. It's just, ugh, cats. It's just, they're yeah, so picky, so complicated sometimes. Okay, I think we're done with the water here. <laughs> I think we're done. We drank a lot. Jeez. Huh? Now you so big. So much water. Wow. <laughs> That was a bit of a longer kitty break. I did not expect her to drink for that long. <laughs> But also good to know that's that's another thing we can do every now and then during some kitty breaks. Just some special water time. Yeah. You're so silly. Rub your face. Yeah. <sighs> 
I don't know another wolf now. Okay. Yeah, half a little, half a, half a nice walk. Very good evening. They will enjoy the sunset. And I'm gonna go back over here. Just make one more practice painting. At least one more. And yeah, talk to you later, Lucid. Especially when we're gonna talk about Stardew Valley plans. I've been seeing a lot of messages in Discord pop up, and I don't need to catch up later. So, alright. Um, this time we're gonna do it a bit differently. A different... arrangement. So before that it was like kind of this. Now we make it a bit more horizontal, shall we? And then, like at some point, that there's not really much of a need to draw some more of these guidelines because they're just gonna be squished so close together that it doesn't matter. Okay. And Hoko is leaving us again. Follow the lines again. Uh, all right. Large.
so I'm also gonna try to merge some of these together here and there. So far, I'm much more happy with the structuring. It seems more natural, especially the the, the kind of merging strategy here. Uh, it seems to really be working out well. There's a lot more natural variety to it. So now more of the tapping to have the this kind of like fainter edges and, and structures here and there. Kind of like floofing it up a little. Fluffing it up here and there. And that uh, some smaller bits, some points.
Okay, I think I've added enough little details. And so now let's switch to the softer tool.
Hey cat! How are you doing? I'm doing well, how about you? Doing well? Glad to hear that. My mom overworked herself and sprained her ankle, so that's not good. Hmm. That's not not good. Hope she can get some rest. And yeah, on my side, everything is going pretty splendid right now. Lots of good news. I'm getting my vaccine tomorrow. I got the appointment. I made the appointment today, and already it's happening so soon. Some future streaming plans with friends. Playing Stardew Valley, and I'm very excited about that. I did some cute drawings over here with these two. Like, also very happy with them. And yeah, tomorrow a new video will come out. So yeah, and yeah, she's laying in bed, and yeah, she is going to have to stay like that for a while. Yeah, gotta get some rest. No overworking anymore. Also, the, the green and white cat came back. I guarded the cat door, I had to lock it, but that made it so that one of my cats was locked out. Ooh. That's good. Guarding the cat, the cat door, like it was waiting for, for somebody to come out. Hoku is also doing well, by the way. <clears throat> just now, as I was doing the, the kitty break, I just held a, a, a bowl of water to her, and she drank from it like she wasn't drinking anything for days. She was just so... she was just keeping going and going. And I swear, I have water for her outside. Standing ready. But nope.
It was waiting for me like it would start meowing for me and it, if I went to the front door it would run over and start meowing for me. <laughs> That's kind of cute. But if it's not your own cat, just keeps on doing that all the time, then... Not depending on how your cats react to it. Hmm. Yeah, it's not your cat. So, yeah. I don't know. That cat seems to have extreme separation issues. I've been thinking it was abandoned here. Maybe. I assume it has no color or anything around it. So, hmm. Maybe. It can be always a bit complicated I think if you don't ta if you don't get a collar for your own cat uh, the neighbors m and it's free roaming uh, the neighbors m might get confused like does somebody own the cat now or not and if you're not like known among the the, the neighbors and they know the cat Yeah, and then it might cause some confusion. No color. <clears throat> I don't know if it is here today I want to call a shelter or something. Hmm. It's, it's hard to say what to do. Like, are you... Are you... Gonna hang out some, some kind of flyers to, to say like, Hey, are you missing this cat? Or are you gonna contact the shelter, or you're gonna just directly ask some some neighbors if they might know this cat, they might know who it belongs to. Hmm. Well, either way, I hope you will be able to find some kind of solution for this cat.
Not a good idea, but generally I would think people would keep their cats in their yards because there are so many freaking dogs here that can leave their yard. Hmm, yeah. At least you would think so. Gosh. If I... If I might get uh, to the point where I, I have like my own house somewhere. With a garden and everything. Um, yeah, I would be really anxious about letting my cats out. Uh, unless I have like everything cat proof and like there is a a fence around my house that is just the cats can can't get over it or under it or anything like there, there is so much that uh, that could happen outside of my own property it gets into fights with other cats or other kind of animals like dogs and whatever might be roaming around. I also don't really want my cat to just hunt and then just kill a bunch of birds. Uh, you get cat food, okay? You get cat food and that's what you're gonna eat. Um, and yeah, cars and everything is also... Would, would really make me scared for the kitties. Sand is in their nature to to roam around and explore and have their own territory. Well, it just really depends on the cat. Some just go completely crazy if they can't stroll around. And go outside all the time and some are just just much happier inside it really depends Cats kept <clears throat> kept doing that. They kept killing the birds. We want them to kill mice and gophers, but not the birds. Yeah, it's actually a a, a significant problem that like then there are a lot of cats. Like there are so many house cats in total to the point where it actually has a, a significant influence on the bird population and. It's actually a problem in some areas. You would you would not think that these little cute fluff balls could have an effect like that, but yeah. They're still hunters. They still do what they do. What their instinct tells them to do. So also, kind of like from an environmental point of view, it's, it's also even better to not let the cats do that.
So I gotta say I'm quite pleased with how these clouds are turning out. I think I got I, devel I developed some good techniques for painting them. Still there's room for improvement of course. But overall I'm much happier than compared to what I produced last stream. Yeah, my mom was going to buy a, a bell color on them or something and just rely on mouse traps instead. We didn't do that, but I haven't seen any more dead birds. Hmm. Thank you, cat. That you like it. No, also remember my my layout is a little bit messed up and I forgot to check it. Stretch this out a little bit and it's better again. There we go. I did some recordings and that sometimes messes up the, the layout and everything. For the most part this is fine, I'm not gonna do too much detail work because it's just supposed to be some kind of practice painting. Not a full-fledged finished painting. Oh yeah, so, uh, we did quite, quite a lot today. Hmm, let me see. Let's maybe do it so that we can look at everything at once, what we have made today. Uh, not this way. There, I want you to... Can I not do that? How to do this? This way? Yeah, there we go. That's what I wanted to do. Let's put them a bit closer together, so... Look at them nicely. There we go. <coughs> Sorry. Okay. I'm also doing this so that 
um, later YouTube is gonna pick this as the thumbnail and then you, you're able to see what I've done in the bit, uh, in the stream in the thumbnail so makes it easier and yeah have a, have a nice overview cute <laughs> So, well, act now let me actually do this here, because... There. My layout is a bit in the way of the other painting, but this is much better. Perfect. Alright. That's basically it. Honko is not in a room, I think, no? Be here, just under the table. You want to come here? Oh. Look, have this bowl with water in it. Oh. Yes. Oh. Oh. oh, flying around, sleeping. Up. Just have to be obnoxious enough with my with my whistling that till she finally comes over. Okay, here. Yeah. Yeah. Say goodbye to everybody. Okay, let's have your little bowl. Over. Oh, look at her. Shook, shook. Oh, what a bowl. Yeah. I'm playing. I'm playing. Oh, boy, why are you? So it's like this, we turn around over here, the bowl over here. Doesn't seem to be here about the water right now. She drank enough an hour ago, so I would be surprised if she still wants to have water actually. Yeah, okay, now she's lying down. Good. Hoku is so cute, yes. <clears throat> He's stretchy. Isn't she happy? I'm gonna give you some brushes later. But yeah, that's it for me. Um, What is there to announce? So yeah, mo tomorrow I'm gonna get my vaccine. I don't know how I'm gonna react to it. So... Yeah, but... The next couple of days there is not going to be any stream for me. Um, but yeah, if you want to get updated, then you know the drill. Follow me on Twitter uh, or join the Discord server where we have also a very nice and lovely community with lots of nice uh, and friendly people. Um, <clears throat> there, I'm gonna drop all of the, the stuff in the chat. And we have the socials. And... No, not the discords. I was just singular discord. There we go. <laughs> but yeah. Also thank you for dropping by. Cat and everybody else. It was lovely. Wish you also a, a, a good day to you. And everybody else. So, uh, let's see. Let's maybe raid somebody. I do have someone in my visor. Uh huh. So, it seems like it's off. It's playing a new game. And let's see what this game is all about. So, 
as usual. Let me let me uh, go raid channel. Um, if you're on the YouTube side, you can jump over to Twitch and join the raid. If Nightbot is working. Hello, Nightbot. Please post the link. Thank you. All right, and then start the stream, uh, the raid. It's Offer Blues again. Raided him a while ago. I always love his chill, his chill vibes, and the people in his community are also all good people. Although sometimes chaotic, <laughs> but that's a good thing, a good kind of chaotic. So yeah, that's it for me. Have a lovely day. Oh, wait, let me just open this up real quick. There we go. All right, rating. <laughs>